In my opinion, investing doesn't have to be complicated, even though that is often how it's made out to be. Reaching financial freedom as a long-term investor is not about making frequent trades in and out of stocks and trying to perfectly time what the market's gonna do. In fact, that approach can often lead to subpar results, not to mention more stress. And as Charlie Munger said, the big money in investing is not in the buying and selling, but in the waiting. Which is why in this video, we'll be talking about five dividend stocks that you can feel good about owning for a long, long time. These are all great companies that have a history of actually outperforming the market, and I think they're ones you can buy and just hold forever. Now, the important thing to keep in mind as we're going through these companies is that we're investing today for 10, 20, 30 years down the road, well into the future. And the whole goal with owning these companies is to someday live off the dividends they provide. These are mature, stable businesses that I think have the staying power to be around and continue growing for a long period of time. And in my opinion, they're all gonna be resilient to drastic change and disruption well into the future, which is what makes them great long-term investments, with one of the best examples of that being this first company here. Now, waste management is exactly what it sounds like. This company manages and disposes of waste, aka garbage, and they do so with unmatched size and scale. They're the largest waste management company in the country, and as you can see from this chart here, they serve as customers in almost all 50 states, and their reach even expands up north into Canada. Like I said a moment ago, this is a great example of a business that's resilient to change. People and businesses generate trash every day, and someone needs to handle all of that. It's not a flashy business by any means, but it's crucial and it's definitely consistent. If you think about it, no matter the state of the economy or no matter what's going on in the world, garbage is a constant. There is always going to be garbage. And the way that I see it, as long as there are people living on this earth, there will be ways to manage. And one of the cool things about this company is that they operate on a subscription-based model for their services. And what's crazy is that upwards of 75% of their revenue is recurring, which is an awesome thing for any business. And that predictability definitely helps the company maintain a consistent and growing dividend. Now looking at the dividend stack, this isn't gonna be the highest yielding or fastest growing dividend, but the consistency is definitely there. The yield, like I said, coming in on the lower end, about one and a half percent, and the five-year growth rate really isn't anything to write home about either. Only 3.4% with a four-year dividend growth streak. But if we look at this dividend history chart, we can see they've actually been growing the dividend quite longer than four years. If we go all the way back to 2004, they were paying, it looks like, about 19 cents per share for the dividend compared to today, which is sitting at 70 cents. So in the last 20 years, that dividend has more than tripled. And more important than just the dividend alone, waste management has delivered market-beating returns for its shareholders across pretty much every time period. Just in the last year, waste management is up almost 28% compared to the S&P 500's 19%, so quite a spread there. And if we zoom out over the last five years, the spread here widens. Waste management is up about 114.5% compared to the S&P 500 up 81.25%. And then zooming out once more, looking at this 10-year period, waste management has just absolutely decimated the S&P 500 with a 448% return compared to the S&P's 173%. It's not even close. Now, Walmart is obviously a company that needs no introduction. Their business model revolves around providing low price goods, and that's something deeply ingrained in human nature. People will always want value for their money. They'll always want to pay the least amount possible for the things that they're buying. That's something that will never change. And that's why Walmart is such a great business because it's the go-to spot for that. My fiance and I actually do all of our grocery shopping at Walmart. We have a really nice one right around the corner from us, and we eat at home probably 99% of the time. So it's really nice to be able to spend the least Least amount possible on groceries. But anyway, moving on, one thing that Walmart does really well is changing with the times. They've embraced e-commerce and have invested heavily in their online presence. And at this rate, e-commerce represents about 15% of their total sales. And that number is expected to keep increasing from here. Now looking at the dividend stats, like with waste management, you're not gonna see the highest yield or the highest growth rate from Walmart with the yield coming in at 1.35% and the five-year growth rate really not too much higher. But once again, they definitely make up for that with their consistency. Walmart is actually a dividend king, and they've been growing this dividend for the last 50 straight years. And once again, across all time periods, Walmart is actually outperforming the S&P 500. In the last year, it's pretty neck and neck. I will say these returns are pretty identical, both coming in around 19%. But zooming out, looking at the five-year period, we start to see Walmart pull away just a little bit with a 92, almost 93% return compared to the S&P's 82% return. And then looking at the 10-year period, the spread is still intact, and it's actually pretty much identical as the five-year period. There's still about a 10% difference between the two, but Walmart still has the edge. Mm -hmm. 
Now, once again, this is a company that needs no introduction. Visa is one of the most recognizable companies in the world, but still, despite that, not a lot of people actually know what the business does. In a nutshell, Visa operates as a global payments network, and when a customer buys something from a business, Visa checks with the customer's bank to make sure they have enough money to make the purchase. And if it all checks out, if the customer has enough money, then Visa helps transfer the money from the customer's bank to the business's bank while collecting a fee in the process. It pretty much operates like a toll booth business. Now, out of the handful of different payment networks out there like Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and the others, Visa is the largest network out of the bunch. And as more merchants, banks, and consumers join the Visa network, the value of the network increases, which creates a flywheel effect where this larger network attracts even more participants, which further reinforces Visa's dominance in the space. Now, I actually just recently added Visa to my own portfolio. I started my position right after Christmas, and since then have been buying one share per week, leaving me with a total of seven shares right now. And I absolutely love this company. At some point, I could see Visa becoming the largest position in my portfolio, which I'm very excited about because I think this is just a fantastic business, and it's an absolute behemoth in the dividend growth department. Looking at the stats, Visa's actually gonna have the lowest yield out of all of the stocks we've talked about today. It's not even 1%. This forward yield is 0.75%, but guys, like I said, it is an absolute behemoth in the dividend growth department with a 16 and a quarter percent five-year dividend growth rate. So you might not be getting the highest starting yield, but if you held this bad boy for a long period of time, you know, over five, 10, 15, 20 years, if they were able to maintain even half that dividend growth rate, your yield on cost would be pretty impressive. And like I said earlier, that's the time period you have to think in terms of because once again, we're investing today for the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the road. So the dividend growth matters. And once again, guys, across all time periods, Visa is outperforming the S&P. In the last year, they're up 21% compared to the S&P's 18.7%. And zooming out, looking at the five-year returns, Visa's starting to pull away here a bit with a 20% gain over the S&P. And then zooming out once more over the last 10 years, guys, it's just, it's not even close. Visa's outperforming the S&P 500 by, it looks like 260% in this time period. That's just insane. And I'll tell you what, looking at this definitely makes me feel like I missed out on a lot by not buying Visa sooner, but I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that these same sort of returns carry into the future, but we'll see what happens. Now, you may not have heard of this one before. It's a bit under the radar, but Rollins is one of the world's largest pest control companies, which, like with waste management, the need for pest control is constant and is pretty impervious to change. Depending on where you live, you're always gonna have to deal with certain critters, whether it's ants, spiders, cockroaches, termites. It's a pretty hard thing to permanently get rid of, which gives Rollins a reliable and consistent demand for its services and can help make it a bit more resilient to economic downturns. Moreover, the nature of pest control requires a more more local presence. People generally prefer a trusted local service when it comes to pest control. And through various mergers and acquisitions, Rollins has bought up quite a handful of local companies and has expanded its footprint over the years. I remember as a kid in small town Yuba City, California, we often had issues with ants and spiders. We kind of lived on the outskirts of town. So like I said, we constantly had to deal with critters. And so a few times a year, we had to have Clark Pest Control come out and spray. Those were our guys. And I didn't realize they were owned by Rollins until I started learning about the company. I thought that was pretty cool. But anyway, looking at the dividend stats, guys, this is the best out of the bunch so far. We've got a yield coming in about 1.4%. So once again, this is a little bit on the lower end, just like all the other stocks we've seen so far. But that five-year growth rate is off the charts. That's more akin to what we saw with Visa coming in at 16 and three quarters of a percent. And they may only have a three-year dividend growth streak, but we can see that they've been consistently paying the dividend for the last 34 straight years. And if we scroll down here, for the most part, the dividend growth has been pretty consistent over the years, with the exception of 2020 right here. It looks like they did reduce it there, but otherwise things are looking good. And I'll tell you what, out of all the companies that we've looked at so far today, the returns on this one are the most impressive. In the last year, they've outperformed the S&P 500 by about six percentage points. So really nothing too crazy there. And over the last five years, the spread between the two is more or less the same, about six, almost seven percentage points. But Here's where it gets interesting, guys. Look at that difference between Rollins and the S&P. 501 and three quarters of a percent versus 173%. That is a 328% difference between the two over the last 10 years. And the crazy thing is who would have thought, like in what world would this boring, pest control company that not many people would have heard of would have generated such market dominating results. It's just, I don't know, the stock market is crazy sometimes. 
So Watsco is another one of those under the radar companies, but this one is going to blow you away, no pun intended. This company is a distributor of HVAC products. So they deal with heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration, which obviously is essential for any property, whether it's residential or commercial. No matter what's going on in the world or what's happening in the economy, people will wanna keep their homes and their businesses at a comfortable temperature, which helps Watsco to be relatively recession resistant. Even during economic downturns, people prioritize repairing or replacing their HVAC systems. It's just not something you wanna go without, especially during a frigid winter or a sweltering summer. And once again, it's important to reiterate that Watsco is a distributor of these HVAC products. They're not a manufacturer, so they essentially act as the middleman. And they make money by getting the right products to the right people in the right places, and they have a vast distribution network that reaches many different areas throughout the country. Now looking at the dividend stats, Watsco's gonna have the highest yield out of all of the companies we've looked at today, coming in at about 2.5%, with a five-year growth rate that's still very respectable, 10.5%, love to see that double-digit dividend growth, and they've been growing this bad boy for the last 10 straight years, so there is some nice consistency there. Now, as far as the returns go, in the last year, it looks like they beat the S&P by about eight percentage points, which is nice. Zooming out, looking at the five-year period, the spread here is quite a bit larger, okay? 212.6% compared to the S&P's 82%, so that's about 130 percentage points. And then zooming out once more over the last 10 years, this just obliterates the S&P 500, guys. There is a 302% difference in returns between these two. That's crazy. So once again, with Watsco, we've got this extremely boring company in a recession-resistant industry just delivering market-crushing returns. I think this one and actually all of the companies that we've talked about today are great ones to buy and just hold on to for dear life. And having said that, in this next video right over here, I'm telling you about three more stocks that are the exact opposite. These stocks are treble. Okay, and you would absolutely, absolutely regret buying them. So click right over here to find out which ones they are and I'll see you in the next one.